Hey guys! So Truth Alive 7 has invited me back into his awesome garage to help him with another sport bike review. For those of y'all who don't know me, my name is Kimmy and we're going to be talking to y'all today about the 2008 Honda CBR 1000 RR. In 2008, Honda really brought a game changer into the sport bike world with this bike. It's a totally new generation of bikes and at the time it was the lightest Japanese 1000 on the market. Um, a few changes that they made to the 2008 model. First of all, it weighed only 447 pounds and that is with a full tank of gas. It's a really light bike and also in addition to that, they did a really good job of centralizing the weight. Um, a few of the physical appearance changes on this bike. We used to have an undertail exhaust on the old bikes and now they've moved the exhaust over to the side over here for kind of more of a GP feel. And this really um, changes up the appearance of the bike a lot. Also, you're going to see that there's a lot less fairing on the lower portion of the bike, so there's a lot less plastic overall. And some people think that this makes the bike look less menacing or less aggressive, but honestly, I really like it. I just fucking love this bike. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And it kind of has more of a super sport look to it, which I really like. Okay, so every couple of years Honda makes a Repsol version. Uh, this bike is not actually a Repsol. If any of you are enthusiasts, you'll know because it doesn't have orange wheels. Uh, it's just a replica kit. But the Repsol kit is just a replica of the MotoGP bike. So you don't have any performance differences or anything like that. Design-wise, there are a whole bunch of changes to this bike and everything is moving towards more user friendliness and more lightweight and MotoGP design. That's what Honda is going for with the bike. Uh, the frame is completely new. It's a hollow aluminum cast frame. Um, the subframe is new, super light. The subframe splits into two pieces. You can disconnect it here, and uh, that makes it really easy if you want to remove your passenger pegs like I did. It is a very, very strong motor, really, really strong mid-range. Um, it's about 180 horsepower at the crank, a little bit more, and you end up getting about 150 at the rear wheel. So it's, it's, it's a respectable number. Um, when you compare it to the other bikes of this year, it's not far behind, um, but Honda felt so strongly about this bike that they continued to make iterations of it uh, year after year after year, so the horsepower rating started to fall behind when like the 2011 ZX10 came out and, and the BMW S2000 RR. Um, those made this bike start to look like a low horsepower bike, but Honda felt so strongly that this design was good, it was user friendly, um, that it was lightweight, that they just kept making it and, and uh, the sales numbers have reflected that Honda really knows what they're doing. Honda has gone in and added an idle air control system and a ignition interrupt control system and what that does is it keeps the massive amount of power in the really strong mid-range from causing the wheel to walk out coming out of a corner. Uh, it's sort of like a traction control system but it's all in the CPU. Uh, it's not nearly as advanced or as elegant as a traction control system and it's not um, you can't tweak it or set it in modes or anything like that, but uh, they updated it again for 2012 and made it, added more components and made it even better. Um, but it's essentially, it just makes the throttle really user friendly. You always feel like you have power, but it never feels like it's too much, which compared to say a Ducati or a Crossplane R1, um, the bike feels very fast, but it feels very, very smooth. And that's the power of, of what they've done in the computers here. In, uh, with the idle air and, and the ignition interrupt. Monoblock brakes, they're extremely powerful. Uh, Tokiko brakes and a unit pro link swing arm and that's MotoGP drive, it's all MotoGP drive. And the biggest thing they've done to make this bike user friendly is the centralization of the weight. You can feel when you tip the bike up, it feels like a 600. The weight is extremely minor and is, it's extremely compact and that really uh, helps the turn in into a corner. It really helps the bike ride well at the track coming out of the corner. Um, really, if, if I was to pick a 1000 for the track, this would be the one because I think you could hop on it and post the quickest lap times. So another thing Honda did with their redesign is uh, to improve clutch feel and clutch takeoff and slipper clutch action. They've added a cam to the, their super slipper clutch system, uh, which really, really helps taken off off the line, it helps quarter mile times, it makes the clutch wear uh, not as bad and it makes the slipper clutch really effective at reducing wheel hop at the track. What all this design change has done is it's like Honda said, we're going to focus all of our efforts on performance and weight, performance and weight. But then it's like they got all that done and they thought, well how are we going to wrap the fairings around this? And it just 
doesn't quite work for me. It's like they just threw it together. Uh, you've essentially got one bolt and a thousand tabs here and here and all around. Uh, and it, it's not a very good system. It doesn't come off very easily. And it, I think it's kind of ugly, personally. Uh, that's just my opinion. So the steering stabilizer on this bike is underneath the fairings, and it's an electronic steering stabilizer. Uh, most people tend to go with one of the mechanical ones. Honda swears by their electronic steering stabilizers. Uh, I have been at pretty high speeds on this bike, and I can say it does feel like it does a very good job. And Honda's been swearing by these for years, so I do like it. As far as the bike is to ride, it's extremely nimble for a 1000, although you can still feel the heavy motor. You know, it doesn't necessarily ride like a 600. It rides like a, a light 1000, uh, sort of like how my Ducati felt. Uh, the 1198 that I had. So what I try to do with my reviews is I always try to let you guys know what is a bike like to live with every day. I own this bike, it's my my road bike, okay? Uh, and I've I've ridden it now for a few months and compared it to the the Yamaha R1, the Crossplane, and the Ducati and, and all those other bikes that you've seen me review before. Uh, and I'm going to give you my honest opinion about when it all comes down to it which bike is best and why. And, and let me just explain to you some of the faults, the everyday faults with this bike. First one being what I mentioned before, the fairings. If you ever have a, a, an off the motorcycle experience and your bike ends up on the ground, you're gonna have a pain trying to get these fairings off and back on in a straight manner, okay? The, the system is not very good. And it's like I said, it all seems like they just kind of threw it around their awesome frame and engine design. And it is an awesome frame and engine design. Um, the, if you ever want to switch to GP shift on the Yamaha, you literally just reverse the pin. This one, in order to go to GP, I had to cut a hole in the front sprocket cover, and that was really annoying. Um, just another negative feature of the bike. Um, I'm not a big fan of the seat removal process. You have to pull these off, and then there's a screw in here that you have to remove, uh, an Allen screw, and it actually comes with a, it, it was originally a, a Phillips head, and it was so small and inaccessible that it just rounded immediately. On this bike and on my friend's TVR 1000, so I had to change it to an Allen key. Uh, I don't know why they didn't just go with the kind of traditional under the back of the seat two bolts. So uh, I'm not a big fan of that. As far as frame sliders are concerned, everyone always wants to know, is it going to be a no-cut system and I gotta, am I going to have to cut my fairings? Well, you will on this have to cut your fairings. They end up about there. Unless you want to go with the no-cut system, which uh, ends up hugging really tight to your frame right around this front area, and uh, it, it'll end up rubbing off uh, paint off of your fairings if you go with the no-cut solution. Really, the best option for this bike, other than just not dropping it, would be to uh, go with a Woodcraft case cover. The good thing about oil changes on this bike is that your oil bolt is actually very accessible. There's a hole in the fairings, so you can get right to it although you may get oil all over the, the sides of your fairings. However, the annoying thing to me is that Honda has moved away from what most people do and have a pier window, and they actually have a dipstick on the other side. I'm really not a fan of that design at all. Um, comparing it to, let's say, the R1, which I'm a huge fan of the R1, this bike would be better at the track. The, turn, the initial turn in is much, takes much less effort. Um, it holds the line very well. Um, and the, the throttle out of the corner is very controllable. Um, whereas the R1, um, it, the throttle is very sharp, the turn in takes a lot of effort, and the suspension's a little bit too clutch. So at the track, the, the crossplane R1, the, you can look at my previous review on it, not a big fan of, the, of it out of the box. It would take a lot of modification, in my opinion, to make it go faster around a track than this bike. Um, the, the wheel horsepower between the two bikes is about the same. It's about 150, 151. Um, but the way the power is delivered on the Yamaha, I enjoy more on the road. It's, it's very uh, aggressive. You can really open the throttle and feel like you're directly connected to the back wheel. This does not have flywheel wire throttle. This does not have a gear position indicator. Uh, it does not have power modes. These are the kinds of things that I want to have in a street bike. And it would be nice to have them in a, in a track bike, but um, the package that we have here, in my opinion, is better track focused. Uh, even though the bike is versatile and it's fairly comfortable for a sport bike, I would choose the Yamaha on the street. When I go out 
on this in the back roads, I do not go as quickly. Uh, I'm usually 10 to 20 miles an hour slower on a corner entry. And it's because, to me, the Yamaha feels more planted in a broad sweeper than this bike does. And the motor on the Yamaha, if you have it in the right power mode for the right time and you know the bike, it's very, very responsive and effective at getting that power to the ground and getting you out of the corner quickly. And that's, it, it's, it's very, very easy to adjust and play with the, the line in a broad sweeper. And that's what I like about the Yamaha. It's extremely comfortable as well um, and versatile. So if I was going to choose a bike for the road, it would be the Yamaha R1. Um, it's been, I love owning this bike, but I, I'm thinking about getting my next track bike being this bike and my next road bike going back to a Yamaha R1. And that's kind of my verdict on the, the bike comparison. In 2008, CBR, oh crap, fuck. Um, it was the lightest sport bait, sport, God damn it! Sport, <laughs> big sale! <laughs> Hi everybody! <laughs> okay, um. <clears throat> um, with regards to the gentleman that said I was fucking stupid in the last video, F-U-K-I-N-G-S-T-U-P-I-T, I just wanted to discuss with you how the eloquence and depth of your comment was moving to my soul. Yeah, sure. Very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you looking at me? Maybe. Are you looking at my boobs? Why does it have the keys in it? So I can move it. Um, then also to everyone who commented about my boobs or said that I was banging hot. Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> I want to make sure. I see where the camera is and it makes me nervous. You need paper towels. <laughs> you, you, you need some. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put this one back. You still have the birds? Say whatever the fuck you want to say. Oh, that's exciting. I'm not allowed to say fuck, though. Remember? Yeah, don't say fuck. You might offend that guy. <laughs> what are you doing? Am I going or not going? You're going. Was I not going? You were not going. Okay, what am I going and what am I not going? Are you just not going to tell me? Here. I'll go like this and that. <laughs> like this and this? Yeah, like that and that. Okay, are you going? Yeah, I'm going.